Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, another video here relating to the 10 gigahertz beacon project again. As usual, it's been a while since my last um, video. Um, one issue is that I just don't have the funds to uh, buy parts for, uh, for projects very often, so it tends to uh, go a long time between uh, um, episodes of uh, working on stuff. But uh, I do have a rather exciting update for you today regarding the uh, 10 gig beacon progress. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you might notice some differences with the uh, bench over here. The uh, workbench has been uh, rebuilt and the test equipment rack that you can't see in this uh, shot is, uh, has been uh, rebuilt. So the uh, work area here is a little uh, better than it was before. I'm also kind of excited about that. So you might recall from earlier videos that I was having some trouble with beacon exciters and getting, uh, getting them to run cleanly on the frequencies I wanted. Uh, I use a times 9 frequency multiplier from 1152 megahertz to get to the final 10 gig frequency, which I wanted to be in the uh, 10,368.300 to 10,368.400 uh, so-called uh, beacon segment of the band. Um, so most synthesizers, or every synthesizer that I was able to get and uh, test or able to afford, will generate 1152 megahertz exactly, quite cleanly. Uh, but that comes out to 10,368.000. It's not up where I want it in the band. And all of those synthesizers, when asked to generate a slightly higher frequency, a few kilohertz higher to shift the beacon up where I wanted it in the 10 gig band, had objectionable spurs, and I just didn't want to run them that way. Uh, so... Um, one of the things I had tried was the Leo Bodner GPS reference clocks running at 576 megahertz, uh, which can drive the multiplier in a times 18 mode, but again, they're uh, clean at 576 exactly, which puts it at the wrong frequency in the 10 gig band, not where I wanted it. As soon as I nudge them a little bit above 576 megahertz, they're not clean anymore. There are very strong spurs, which uh, I personally object to. I just don't want to run the beacon that way. Uh, so I stumbled across, as you may recall from an earlier video, if you've been watching the uh, series, uh, a method of adjusting the 10 megahertz reference up slightly in frequency uh, by a few hertz or a few hundred hertz to shift the uh, final 10 gig frequency up while running the synthesizer at programmed for 11, 1152 megahertz exactly. And so it sort of tricks the synthesizer into thinking it's generating 1152. Actually, it's generating something higher, but it can do it cleanly if you shift the 10 megahertz reference up. The problem with that is that the only references that are really affordable and, and practical for this project were the Leo Bodner GPS reference clocks, and the two models they had were limited to, uh, to integer hertz values. So it turns out the only two integer hertz values around 10 megahertz or a little above 10 megahertz that will produce integer kilohertz values in the, in the portion of the 10 gig band I was shooting for are 299 hertz above 10 megahertz, which comes out to 10,368.310. And 326 hertz above 10 megahertz, which comes out to 10,000... 368.338 kilohertz. It's desirable to have the beacon, at least I feel it's desirable to have the beacon on an integer kilohertz frequency because that's easy for people to remember. If it's something crazy like, uh, you know, 10,311.4 uh, or something, 10,368.311.4, uh, uh, it's just, it's hard for people to remember. So I wanted an integer kilohertz value um, up in the 10 gig band. So the Leo Bodner uh, units were only able to do that on a couple of frequencies. And the one that was really desirable was the uh, 310 kilohertz because that, uh, you know, that's a nice easy round number to remember. But I didn't like being so limited. Uh, you know, if another beacon came on that frequency, I'd have no place to go and it's taking me forever to get this thing uh, built. And one beacon owner was going to put one on uh, on exactly that frequency and kindly uh, moved it for me at the last minute when I explained that I was having trouble uh, getting it to mine to run cleanly anywhere else and kind of needed that frequency and that was that was very very kind of him and appreciated but anyway to make a uh, 
this long story somewhat short, recently Leo Bodner Electronics came out with a new version of the GPS reference clock called the LBE-1420. Apparently it's a relatively different design concept. Um, it can work up to 1100 megahertz, uh, and they say it can actually be pushed higher up to 1500 megahertz in a lot of cases. So it works a little higher in frequency, but the big thing is it can generate fractional hertz values. You're not limited to integer hertz values with this one, so that opens up some different possibilities. So I bought one of these to do some testing uh, to see if it can run at 1152 megahertz or a little above that at, at a proper, uh, proper frequency to put the beacon where I wanted it, one multiply times nine in the 10 gig band. And also to check and see if it can generate fractional hertz uh, uh, values just above 10 megahertz if I used it as a 10 megahertz reference to give me some more freedom uh, with that method using the, running the synthesizer at exactly 1152 but pushing it up by changing the 10 megahertz reference. So I bought one of these and I've been doing some testing on it and today I want to show you some of the testing uh, results and uh, and show you what this LBE-1420 can do in this regard uh, with the uh, Beacon project. So bear with me, we'll get over to the uh, test equipment here and run some tests and look at some things and uh, we'll go over the results with the new uh, LBE-1420 unit. Okay, so here we are with the uh, test setup. Here's the uh, Beacon on the bench here. There's the new uh, the old Bodner LBE-1420 unit laying there. Uh, hooked up to the uh, GPS antenna and the laptop for programming and the uh, test equipment. So um, right now I've got it programmed for exactly 576 uh, megahertz. Um, to do 1152 megahertz, I'd have to use a mixer on the uh, spectrum analyzer because my spectrum analyzer only goes to uh, one gig. So I have done that test, but I'm not going to repeat it again here today. Um, it turns out it's the same deal as at uh, 576. If you go to 1152, you get the same kind of results I'm about to show you. So at 576 uh, exactly... Uh, it's nice and clean. We're looking at this uh, close in because any spurs at this frequency are close in. They're not wide spaced uh, spurs. So at exactly five, uh, 572, 576 megahertz, it looks great. Uh, let's come over here and just uh, change this frequency to, because the 576 exactly would put it at 10368.0, which is not where I want it. So let's change this to, uh, 576 zero two zero 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 so that's 20 kilohertz above uh, 576 that would put the beacon on 10368.360 which is a nice frequency uh, but here's the issue it's no longer clean we have the close in spurs so it's the same deal as the older Leo Bodner units it's a great unit don't get me wrong I'm not complaining but it goes into some kind of fractional end mode, I suppose, generating these frequencies that aren't inter integer megahertz values up this, this high in frequency. And it has those spurs, which I just don't like. So as far as using it directly as an 1152 megahertz or a 576 megahertz uh, beacon exciter, this is a no-go. I won't accept the spurs at that level, so uh, that's not going to work. But let's try it as a 10 megahertz reference and see what we get that way. Okay, here we are, LBE-1420 generating exactly 10 megahertz. Uh, looking at a close-in uh, frequency span, it looks great. Uh, no problem there. And I have done different spans. I've also used averaging to clean up the noise, uh, you know, down at the bottom of this trace. I've done a lot of things and it's just clean. Um, no matter what span I look at, from very, very narrow to, uh, to very wide span, it's, it's nice and clean. There are no, uh, no spurs at exactly 10 megahertz. They were not with the older ones either. And they were not with the older ones when running up uh, a few hundred hertz higher with the limitation of the integer hertz values that they could do. So this one can do fractional hertz values, as I explained, that opens up a lot of possibilities for the beacon frequency. 
The question is, will it be clean uh, generating fractional Hertz values down here? So let's pick something a little bit challenging. Uh, let's say that we wanted uh, the beacon to be on uh, 10,000... Uh, 368 whoops I'm trying to do this um, while filming here 368.390 let's say and we need to figure out the uh, 10 megahertz uh, reference frequency for that and that's divided by 1036.8 so that would be 376.8 0.16 Hertz above 10 megahertz so let's go over here and uh, see if I can do this while holding the camera uh, let's see 376.16 and uh, set the frequency all right so it's still clean. Uh, it's great. And we can, uh, you know, zoom in to a very uh, narrow span. There's nothing close in. We go out a little wider to um, a little wider span. There's nothing there. We go uh, wider still. Nothing. Wider still. Nothing. So it's clean um, with these fractional hertz values. And I've tried a bunch of them. I've tried a whole bunch of different fractional hertz uh, values around 10 megahertz, just above 10 megahertz, and it's great. Uh, so it looks like uh, this opens up the possibility of having freedom of frequency choice on the 10 gig beacon by using this LBE1420 as a uh, 10 megahertz reference into the... Uh, DigiLO uh, beacon exciter that thinks it's generating 1152 exactly, but it's actually generating something a little higher. So the proof is in actually um, listening to the beacon signal and making sure it's clean, and uh, we'll do that next. And we're back. I now have the LBE1420 Leo Bodner unit providing 10 meg reference into the uh, beacon into the DigiLO uh, Beacon Exciter, programmed for uh, 376.16 Hertz above 10 megahertz. So that would put the beacon on uh, 10,368.390, which might be an interesting place to uh, run a beacon. So let's fire up the beacon here. Apply power to it. Beacon comes up, and we'll just walk over here into the uh, shack where I'm monitoring it on the uh, SDR from my dish uh, up on the tower. And there it is, exactly on frequency. Um, I still may want to work a little bit more on the key clicks. They're really not bad in that if you go a kilohertz off, you can't hear them at all, no matter how strong this is. And I've had it a lot stronger than this. But... But there are no spurs. You notice in this upper uh, waterfall, there are no close-in spurs. And I have zoomed this in and out, looked for really close and really wide space stuff. I've uh, scrolled up and down the band uh, at various zooms and looked all over the place. And there's just nothing there. It's nice and clean. There's no objectionable spurs on this. So it does appear that the LBE1420 unit when operating as a 10 megahertz reference with its freedom of frequency choice with the fractional hertz values can allow me to put the beacon uh, virtually anywhere I want it in the 10 gig band. So finally some freedom of uh, frequency choice. I'm very very pleased with this. And I have tried multiple frequencies. I've tried lots of weird stuff uh, at different frequencies uh, uh, and uh, they all work fine. So this is great. I'm very very happy. Uh, so that's that with the new uh, frequency reference and I can finally move on uh, with the beacon project and do some other work with it and uh, stay tuned there will be um, other videos coming uh, on this uh, there may be one here coming up fairly shortly on some other beacon work but uh, over the next uh, couple months for sure there'll be another video or two as I continue to uh, to work on the beacon 
So as always, thanks for watching. Hope you found something interesting in the video. And hope you all come back uh, for the next one.